What is the mechanism of action? How it reacts? Well, ozone is a powerful oxidant, but his, re but his reaction is very selective. Then we know that ozone loves electrons. He's an electrophilic agent, and then he will attack mainly the double bounds. Then it's added to the double bound to form some ozonites, very unstable, but then inside this sweeterion, it is formed a stable ozonite, also aldehydes, hydrogen peroxides, alpha hydro hydrogen peroxide that are really the active metabolites of ozone because ozone reacts one million times per second. It is completely disappear and it forms all those species. Then we can say that ozone may induce an adaptation to oxidative stress or an oxidative precondition this is a term that we have uh, created for the mechanism of action of ozone. Oxidative because it's an oxidant. For that reason, we name oxidative precondition, but it's important that it has to be under controlled doses by means of a slight and transitory oxidative stress that stimulates the endogenous antioxidant mechanism preparing the host to face physiopathological conditions mediated by reactive oxygen species. You see, like a vaccine. You are uh, having a controlled oxidative stress. You are having or giving to the patient controlled oxidative stress and in under control circumstances, and the patient will create antioxidant defense systems. Then we have the ozone that immediately, well, it is dissolved and immediately disappears. It can be dissolved in plasma, in dependence of the way of ozone application, or in water, or in the interstitial fluids. And then in an early phase, we obtain the reactive oxygen systems that can go to erythrocytes and improve oxygen delivery, or go to leukocytes and produce an immune modulation or go to platelets re and uh, uh, release eicosanoids and growth factors. This is the early phase. But in a late phase, it is produced the lipid oxidation products that are redox signaling molecules that in trace amounts can reach all organs and stimulate different biochemical pathways. It can go to endothelium and modulate nitric oxides or go to bone marrow and activate differentiation at the erythropoietic level, favoring the formation of gifted or super gifted erythrocytes with improved biochemical properties in order to afford that oxidative challenger or activate metalloproteinase that favor the release of stem cells or go to other organs and upregulate the oxidative stress. You see, he can go to every organ, and then he, he will have different uh, possibilities. Then you have this uh, balance between antioxidants of reactive oxygen species. Sometimes appears an, a disease, and this balance is disrupted and appears an excess of reactive oxygen species. Well, ozone will try to maintain this balance. It achieves a cell redox balance. Normally, we have seen that living organisms have developed mechanisms for the advantages of the, of, of the use of these reactive oxygen species. For example, if we have an infection, we need to increase those rows, those reactive oxygen species or reactive nitro nitrogen species in order to confront the infection. But when the infection disappears, these values have to go again to the baseline level. But sometimes 
occurs that a persistent production of abnormally large amount of this species appears and then leads to persistence changes in signal transduction and gene expression, and then will give rise to pathological conditions like chronic oxidative stress. Then, in this situation, ozone will be very useful trying to revert this condition and to go to the baseline. If we maintain this balance, well, not problem at all. But if this equilibrium is disrupted, will appear chronic oxidative stress, we have a cell death, we have the appearance of different diseases like cancer, myocardial infection, cerebral ischemia, neurodegeneration as Parkinson and Alzheimer. You see how important it is to maintain that balance. If we make, a, we can say that the main ozone biological effects is first that is an oxidative uh, therapeutical procedure. It increases oxygen metabolism. It's a metabolic regulator, an immunologic modulator, has a greater missile power against virus, bacteria, fungal parasites, influence in the eicosanoid synthesis release inside this aspect is its anti-inflammatory and analgesic effects and the modulation of cytokines, and mainly it maintains the cellular redox balance. This is our book that we have uh, written. It's in Spanish, now I am uh, writing one in English. Maybe next year it will be published. Then, if we have an oxidative stress, appears more than 400 diseases that is that you know that the oxidative stress is present, maybe cause or effect, it doesn't matter, but appears the oxidative stress. You have in all the organs diseases related to oxidative stress, and we have tried more of these diseases with ozone with benefits results. Of course, it's very easy to say that ozone stimulates the antioxidant defense systems that produce the cell redox balance, we have to prove it. Then, for that reason, we have to go to the animal models. And then we have to study several of these animal models. These are more of them. And are models that the oxidative stress is present. Then, we can evaluate the the possibility of ozone, ozone is an oxidant. If we are using animal models where the oxidative stress is present, if you use an oxidant, well we, well, we can produce damage. For that reason, we try to use that models to evaluate ozone, if it produces more damage or totally contrary, if it produces benefits. All these animal models studies have been published in peer review journal. More of them have been thesis of doctorate. And uh, you can see in, in the literature.